Uh, hello, I'm Patricia Jollymore with North Beach Community Television. Today we're here at Paddle to Quinault, and I am with Guy Kapoman. That's right. Uh, Guy, why don't you tell us a little bit of the history of the Quinault Nation? Uh, the Quinault Indian Nation, um, we have 3,000 enrolled tribal members. We are a nation made up of, of uh, seven different bloods. Um, Explain what you mean by different bloods. What I'm talking about is, is, is you have to have a quarter of um, either Chehalis, Chinook, Cowlitz, Quillute, Ho River, Queets, or Quinault to, to be enrolled into our tribe. Okay. And um, can you give me a little bit of the history of the paddle to Quinault, how it began, who was responsible for starting that? In 1989, the, the state of Washington was doing the bicentennial, and tribes, tribes at that time were wanting to be involved. As, as we all know, we, we've, we've been here long before this was, this was Washington State. So, so we felt, um, how do we do that? And a group of elders uh, spearheaded by a uh, Quinault tribal member, Emmett Oliver was um, it, it was his idea that tribes resurrect maritime culture and uh, bring back canoe carving, bring back uh, uh, navigation uh, out at sea, um, uh, bring back canoe teams and uh, travel like we used to. And the Quinault Nation hadn't had a uh, ocean canoe in over a hundred years before 1994 so it was a long time coming and um, that's how we that's how we got got things going here for tribal journeys uh, now the first time that it happened uh, the amount of um, the variety of tribes that came what was the amount that started out compared to what is here today in uh, 1989 there was uh, 20 canoes for the the paddle to Seattle in 2002, the last time we hosted here, there was uh, 38 canoes. This time in 2013, to honor our warriors, Hashko Chishkwaklolmach, there is 86 that uh, came in on shore. And um, what tribes participated this year? Um, well, the furthest away was uh, Bella Bella in uh, Canada. And uh, Bella Bella, they've been on the water for 32 days to, to, to get here. And they are going to be the host for next year, 2014. And um, so, so they have a presentation on Monday morning where they're going to extend the, the invitation to us and to all the tribes that are here as well. I noticed during the presentation uh, there appears to be a tribe from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us anything who, who that is? Yeah, there's a Hawaiian group from uh, Maui and uh, the Maui um, a canoe team. And uh, they flew over uh, to Seattle and uh, they found an outrigger with the Lummi tribe. 
and brought it to Nia Bay, and they traveled down the coast from Nia Bay to be a part of tribal journeys. So, so um, this event, this this feeling of tribal journeys, the spirit of of tribal journeys reaches out all across the nation. We have a group here from from the uh, Shinnecock uh, out of New York City, um, uh, another group from uh, uh, Tongva from uh, uh, Los Angeles to uh, to the group from Hawaii as, as well. So, so um, while I was walking through, I noticed that uh, it appears to be a new totem pole. I hear that there's a ceremony. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That's uh, going to be taking place later today? Yeah, uh, later today, I'd say around one-ish, two-ish, uh, we have a, a, a totem pole that's, that's going to be dedicated. And um, the the importance of tribal journeys, the importance of this site here that uh, the nation would, would soon like to name Hunnishu Point uh, after one of our respected elders, Philip Martin, who is also a cornerstone in, in uh, tribal journeys here at the Quinault Nation, um, uh, dedicating that uh, totem pole to uh, one of our uh, elders, Emma Oliver, is, is what's going to uh, occur this afternoon. And the uh, uh, totem pole reflects our connection to the earth and its animals and, and uh, the creatures that, that uh, live about our land. That's what truly makes us Quinault is that connection and the, to this land. And uh, the totem pole is a reflection of that. Um, and our carvers, uh, James Dela Cruz Jr., uh, Marco Black, um, uh, Brian coming out, uh, three very dedicated and talented carvers that that put three months of truly blood sweat and tears into this project and and uh and uh, made it uh, such a, a a success and a beautiful uh, living monument testament to culture and tradition and uh so so very big uh, corner posts in our house of culture uh just you know Looking at it, when I was over there, it is extremely tall. Can you tell me the height of it exactly? Yeah, the height of the pole is uh, 75 feet. And uh, it was carved out of a 1,000-year-old uh, tree yeah. that comes from our old growth stand that uh, we've uh, set aside back in the late 70s, early 80s. The leaders at that time, they, they felt it was uh, instrumental in uh, setting aside uh, 20 acres of old growth cedar for these kinds of projects. Right. So, um, Guy, what is your role here and within the the tribe as well? I've um, I've been brought on to to coordinate the paddle for the nation, the uh, paddle coordinator, and uh, so so my responsibilities with my staff, um, uh, my volunteer uh, coordinator, Kerry Corwin. Uh, Melissa Miller uh, logistics and and uh, Lenata Brown food and and um, uh, my assistant also uh, Jesse Grover uh, Stevens uh, who was our volunteer uh, coordinator as well and many of our tribal members that have came forward to help us out on, on this it's been a team team approach that's the only way to, to do something this big and I worked with just about every one of those folks. So. Guy, thank you for taking the time out of uh, what is busy schedule, obviously, um, to interview with North Beach Community Television. So thank you very, very much. Sure. Philip Martin was one of the key people that helped make sure we got this going. He had a vision. He was one of the, the first guys to help get the, the logs for the, the canoes, and he had a lot of important role in the whole tribal journey. Got to get him a good secure spot here. Right here, right there. We have a chair right there for you. We have a chair right there for you.
Dobbs, welcome. I stand by, by this totem. When it was first started, it was going to be a hundred and busted over three feet. We had to cut it down more because of the knots in the upper part of the tree. But they brought a 103-foot trailer, trailer down here. I didn't get there when they fell up, but it was there about a half hour later and they loaded it up on the semi. First we were illegal going down the road, so we had to watch for the cops. But these two gentlemen right here, and I call them gentlemen, because that's what they are. They start carving on this totem, not knowing what was going to be like to do it. And through the process, through the pro had bad words said to them. I told them that's because of jealousy, because they're not carving it. But Marco and Delacruz here, kept on it. They carved it out in the weather while it was raining for a while. They sighed and they finished the job. And it took about eight hours to move it. Got red shed over there to get here. But it's here and it's going to stay. All these native nations coming together. It's absolutely wonderful. I love it. I have a I have a senior, an elder here coming up. He's a little bit older than me. Um, I'm gonna have to give this to him because I think he was one of the fellows that helped build this base. And then we tore it down anyway. But anyway, I want to introduce you to uh, one of our former uh, federal judges, His Honor Francis Rosander. Yeah, I'm very pleased to see what's occurring here today. I really like the job they've done on this totem pole. Uh, I have to admit, when I seen it laying over there on the ground, that, that I knew it was going to be a difficult project. But they, I think these boys that carved it did a great job. But I guess my part here was I worked here in 1953 to build a Coast Guard station. And uh, I never dreamed that, that I ever see this happen, even though over the years I, I knew this was one of the nicest places that I can recall with my, my experience up and down the coast. So uh, I think we have a future here. I'm sure we'd like to welcome everyone here. Hope the word gets around that there's, this is a, uh, uh, project that uh, hopefully will continue and someday like was they said that we could involve all of the Indian tribes from all over the country to come here but uh, I just like to thank the people that did the work I know it wasn't easy it was a tough time schedule barely got things done in time and I uh, and I I'm glad to see all the people who were able to come here today and enjoy themselves and see this sight because if you get out to the edge and you can look up the coast and see Destruction Island, you can look south clear to down past Westport. So it's a beautiful spot. And uh, I just hope it continues to grow and I'd like to thank everyone that come here and especially the people that made it possible to have this today, even though like it was said, there was controversy, but that, that was overcome, I believe, and I think people will get together and pull together, so. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to have a couple words from our carvers. As I said, they not only had to use their skills as a carver, but they had to use the patience of Gerald to get the job done in the first place because nobody, very few, said, go ahead. Um, James Delacruz, Jr. Um, 
Right. I was um, <clears throat> about two years ago, um, President uh, Bond Sharp came and told me a, a vision that she had with um, doing a, what was um, going to be called a spiritual pull, what she told me, but um, her vision that she had was to, she wanted something that would, um, would welcome all the guests here, but also to welcome the uh, Spirit of God to come from the West Coast and sweep across to the East Coast and that there would be healing in the land uh, with a lot of the uh, things that was done with the native people in the past. Um, <clears throat> maybe I can get into the story a little bit later, but I'll let the uh, talker. Hello. Marco Jacob Black, welcome friends from all the directions that come here on our sacred land here on these days of Tribal Journeys 2013. It's an honor and privilege here to work amongst my friend here, James Dela Cruz. He gave me a call one morning, early in the morning, told me to be down at the log and I got up right away be there for my friend we grew up together down in Tohola in school we had our hard times in life but we overcome things in life that we all do one way or another that challenge us in our lives one way or another we overcome we did the work here on behalf of our veterans on behalf of our elders in the past and the future. Like Bill was saying, it was a hard task in the beginning, but we overcome. We overcome and adapt to things that happen when sometimes people put us down and sometimes like this. But we didn't, we didn't talk back to them. We just put our heads down and put our knives in our in our totem pole and get got things done. We stayed late at night, early in the morning we got here. Some days James worked over 14 hours a day. Some days we all did. We all did our we all did our part one way or another to get it done. So I'm saying again, it's been an honor and privilege here to, to stand amongst all of you here, I'm sure even when everybody got here, they seen this Paul, they seen the beauty of it, the power and felt of it. It's been an honor and privilege that we all can share this amongst you all here today in Tribal Journeys 2013. Hi, I'm Brian coming out. Thank you guys for coming. I'd like to say a few words for my uh, my cousin Brian here. He come from a, a pretty rough background, and uh, you know I I watched him grow through the carving of this log, and uh, you know it takes a lot of discipline to to complete something like this. And I talked to him about all the way through carving this log that what while you're carving this. Um, you know, it, it helps you to grow in a lot of ways. It helps you to, for one thing, you learn how to start something and how to finish it. You, you, um, you know, you learn endurance, you learn patience, you learn all the things that goes with carving is, has to do with the balance in life and how you, uh, just, you know, you have, you set a goal and you reach that goal. And so, uh, I'm really proud of Brian for, I'm proud of both Brian and Marco, but I, you know, knowing what my cousin, the life that he had and seeing where he progressed to is really makes me feel good inside. Thank you. Thank you.
Also, I want to recognize one of the main men that got this project going. If it wasn't for this man that, that gave us and made the tools that we had to make this pole, I want to recognize him from uh, Jamestown, Jerry. He's the one that made all of our tools. In the beginning, we didn't have nothing. James had his tools, but I made the move to get some more tools to get for us to get going. And if any, if you want to say any words, I would like to say that it was an honor to be a part of this. And the first time I saw it was on Thursday when we got here, and I looked up and I had tears in my eyes. And uh, I, I would like to say again, I, I was honored to be a part of this. And I would like to congratulate these uh, carvers that did this marvelous job. Thank you. Uh, my name is James Delacruz, Sr. Uh, I, I do have a few words that I'd like to make comment to, but I see one of our councilmen, Jim Sellers, in the audience, and I'd like to call him forward and, and in, any of a, other of our tribal council, you know, tribal council made a decision to, to move this forward and Jim was part of that. I, I previously sat on the council when, when this came forward, I, I knew that it was my son, so I, I removed myself, but Councilman Sellers and, and many of other people that made this possible and I want to recognize and see if Jim has something he'd like to say. Um. Greetings, my name is James Sellers, uh, an all tribal council. I was uh, actually fortunate enough to be out in the uh, north boundary, a portion of the reservation where we have a reserve uh, plot of old growth uh, cedar. And uh, I was out there when this tree was still standing. And I believe this tree is around six, 700 years old. Um, I was there when they fell it, and, uh, and I don't know if Vern's anywhere around, Vern Wilson, but he put in a, a, a long day getting this tree to the ground. Uh, he spent a lifetime as a timber faller, and, and we were fortunate to have him go out and uh, bring this tree down in one piece so that we could uh, utilize it for this pole. And uh, I too want to really thank our carvers. Uh, I've been down here and visited them while they were carving. I know they put in really long hours. They are dedicated and, you know, um, they've earned my respect and I'm proud of them. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jim. Uh, you know, it, it's a happy and proud day for me to see this and, and know that my, my son was part of it, his, his, his childhood friend, his, his cousin. And again, uh, thanks to the council and, you know, our, our, our elder, two of our elders talked about the negatives that, and then I, I don't want to burn a lot of time on that because there's so much good that happened. And, and I know that when it challenged my son, I told him, you know, pray for those people Pray for them and keep your head high and, and do what you need to do to complete your job. Uh, so I know some of our council off, are doing off other things, and I, so I, I understand that. But there, there are some of our cultural people that I don't know where you know. But thank the ones that are here and and, and you know. Uh, several years ago, when my son talks about uh, Ryan. You know, all and Marco mentioned it. All, all three of these boys, and and all of us are, in life sometimes travel rough roads. And I don't know if my son remembers, but he was he was being having a challenge in his life, and I I bought him two carver knives for his birthday present. And I, little did I know that that he would pick that up and do the things that he done with that. Not only in, in his woodwork, but but his other artistry, and and I think. Brian and Marco, and many of you have that with us, and, and the Creator gave that to us. So, my hat's off to them, my hat's off to the nation and our elders. 
for this day. Thank you. You know, when they decided to fall a tree, the faller and the people that were with him built a bed, and there's over a hundred and three feet remained. They only lost about two feet of the top of this tree when it was planting. With what you see now, brings that tree back to life a different way. It will stand proud for many, many more years. If it was up there, still in the north boundary of our reservation, it, somebody could cut it up and made it into lumber. You never know. But I thank the crew and you all for coming here because I know in your heart that you have a lot of praising for God and the will of the tribes and part of the fact that this area will be not only Quinault flags waving but flags from all throughout the nation and out of the nation from Canada because we have so much we had to learn some of the carvings from the Canadians we lost a lot of our skills as for talking our own language. We lost that, but we're working real hard to get it back in school. We lost our dances, we lost our songs, but some of the families kept them themselves and when we started, they brought them out and gave us permission to use them. They still belong to the owner, but we acknowledge it every time we do a song or a dance. But after this site is going to become more and more precious to the Quinaults and the Native Americans, and anybody else who comes here, they'll have a blessing. With that, I'd like to say, if short prayer for the pullers. pullers. Yeah, I'm, I'm always doing the canoe. <laughs> for the carvers and all those that work with this tree to make it what it is today. I want to have a, ask a blessing of the Lord for that, that, all of them. And we want to ask a blessing for all those who come here and participate today, tomorrow, and maybe a hundred years from now. And with that, I just thank the Lord for what he did for our, our people, that we can help other people, because we're all one. My lineage runs into the Fraser River Valley on one side of my family. The other side, it goes to the, the Puget Sound. So, I'm a Heinz 59 or 99, I don't know which. Thank you.
I'm Clinkett on my mother's side. On my father's side, I'm Cowlitz, Quinault, Warm Springs, and Iroquois, and adopted Seneca and many nations around the world because I am a peace elder and I have traveled Mother Earth seven times. I'm almost completed my eighth round in peace. What nation are you representing here today? Uh, How's it? Okay, and you are from where? Um, I'm actually from How's it, the west coast of Vancouver Island, just okay. past uh, Tofino. Okay, and um, you did participate in the paddle to come down to the paddle to Quinault. Yeah, I have my own canoe. Uh, it's a 27-foot dugout, and uh, my 20-foot speedboat is an es escort boat. Okay. So. And um, how long did it take you to canoe down here? Uh, we left on the 21st. We left our reserve, our main reserve. We left the front beach on the 21st. Uh, we stopped at a lot of, all in, pretty well every nation coming down except uh, T-Shot -Shot, T -Shot and uh, Opechisset are way, way up uh, Alberta Canal. So we stopped off in Long Beach, uh, Clayquit, Long Beach, uh, Yakulet. Uh, we stopped at um, uh, uh, a lot of other nations all the way through, uh, Port Renfrew and uh, Nitnat Lake and uh, before we got to Port Renfrew, to, uh, when, when we cut across to the United States, to Nia Bay. Um, I was noticing that you've got some beautiful artwork here. Is this done by by you? Yeah. It is? Yeah, okay. the, all, all this side here is all mine. I do all the, all the shirts and the prints and the original paintings. Okay. Uh, I'm an artist, uh, one of the last artists of uh, Manhauser, where I originally come from. Okay. Uh, Hauser uh, consists of uh, five different nations, including a house. It. So uh, Manhauser is where I'm from. Uh, we're an amalgamated nation to a house it, and uh, I'm the last man house it artist that oh, I know of. Yeah. Okay. We're just going around and asking um, some of the tribes what nations they're here representing today, and yours would be. Sinuxina nak tu asak, kiksari yari khatsati, sit kweri dachkang, atlik yehari ka, nanya i stakin kwan ayakat. My name is Sweetwater. Nanak, I'm from the Kiliwail Gishbuwada clan of the Simsia Nation. My father's from the Raven Frog clan. I'm a grandchild of the Glacier People clan. And my great grandmother was a precious grandchild of the Upper Living clan of the Stikine River from Alaska. And uh, you, did you actually participate in the paddle coming to here on a canoe or? Yeah, I've been participating in the journey for many years. So I'm originally from Alaska. We're getting ready to go on right now, pretty any time now with the Alaskans. So, yeah, it's a great day to be in Quinault. Great day to be indigenous.